Lord, we thank you for this service tonight, Father. Thank you for the, the music, the praise and worship, the songs that were sung to you, Father. Lord, you heard the songs, Father, that they were rose up to you, Father. Now let us just hear what you have for us, Father, in your word tonight, Father, as we talk about patience, Father. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, I ask you to be with the people that are watching by internet, Father, that this word will penetrate their minds, penetrate our hearts, Father, and you give us knowledge and wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Patience during prayer. I'm going to be in James chapter 5, verse 7 through 20. I'm going to read the whole, well, I'm going to read all of it, and then I'm going to go over some points tonight. So starting in verse 7, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious pro, uh, pro, produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. Verse 8, you too be patient, strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. As an example, brethren, of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job. And have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealing, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any or any other oath, but, yet, but your yes is to be yes and your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Is anyone, is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he, is, if he has committed sins, they will, be for, they will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray, for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on earth for three years and six months. Wow. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produces fruit. Verse 19, my brethren, if anyone, if any among you strays from the truth and one turns him turns him back let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins so james chapter chapter 5 verse 7 god's patience is the reason why the lord's coming is delayed that will be the day of judgment since god is postponing the day out of patience, we too should be patient. You know, there's been people, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've been hearing people ever since you were little, God's coming, get ready. We're like, when? You know, this a, that's the hardest thing to do is have patience. And I'm sure a lot of us have struggled with patience, whether it be in traffic, whether it be at the doctor's office. You know, and today, you know, I, I like to refer a lot of things because I'm a big, big, big sports fan. I love sports. I've been a sports fan ever since I was young. And today, it's just, it's funny that I, we're talking about patience. You know, I'm sitting down watching the game, and Houston's not doing anything, and I'm so impatient. I said, come on, do something now. Score. And they're not doing nothing. I was like, man, Eric, got to have patience. I was like, man. So I, I, I like to refer to a lot of stuff in sports, and you have to have patience with a lot of things. So we have to have patience. The Lord is coming. You know, we have to have patience because, you know, many people in the past, a lot of preachers, pastors say, get ready. And we're like, when? We don't know the day or the hour of when Jesus is coming. We have to have patience. It is a part of the fruits of the Spirit. On Wednesday, I have the uh, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth graders in my class on Wednesday nights. 
And we talked about the fruits of the Spirit, and I, and I had them memorize the fruits of the Spirit. And I had them, I asked them, I said, what is the one that you struggle the most? And one is, what is your, the one that, you, that you're strongest? And a lot of them have uh, wrote down patience because they're impatient. And that's a, lot of, that's a lot of us now, you know, we struggle, we struggle with patience. You know, we go to a fast food restaurant. You know, we want our burger now. You know, I'm standing at Whataburger, and they're taking about five, ten minutes, and I want my burger now. So I know a lot of us, we struggle with patience. What are some of the circumstances that tempt you to lose patience? You know, like I said earlier, you're in traffic. Now, I don't like driving in Houston, but there's a lot of traffic, and you have to deal with this, so suck it up, you know? <laughs> so why shouldn't we lose patience with the Lord after almost 2,000 years? We have to. We, ha we, don't, we have to always have patience with the Lord. God, can you help me with this? You know, in his, in his time, he's going to answer your, answer your prayers. Not our time. In his time, we have to have patience. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3 through 5 says, Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of this coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of the water, out of, yeah, out of the water and by water. So there's all, people are going to be saying, well, where's your God? He ain't here yet. You know, all these other people, all these other religions saying, well, you know, God said he's coming back. And, you know, we have to have patience. Patience is the key to everything. Because if you lose in patience, you'll become an angry. And that's going to lead to a whole nother thing. So in James chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for, for precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. You know, in uh, Israel, the autumn, the autumn rains, they come in October, November. For the, and after the, the grain is sown, the spring, came, the spring rain comes up in uh, March and April, just prior to the harvest. So they, the farmers out there, they have to be patient. You know, if they want to harvest, they have to, they have, to have patience for when the rain comes. Just like us. If we're, if we're farmers, we got to wait for the rain to come. We got to wait for the harvest to come because... Patience, like I said, patience is the key to everything. In um, Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, he says, John preached to the people about the coming of the Lord is near. You know, since John preached, there's been many that have been coming, saying, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And a lot of people are like, when, when? Jesus is coming. And I'm saying, Jesus is coming, so have patience. Jesus is coming. Get ready, guys. And we are getting ready to go. And have the biggest wedding feast in the entire world has ever seen. So let's get ready. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, God, you know, Jesus commanded us to go and preach the gospel across the nation. You know, we, we have... Uh, people here, ministers here that go to the prison and preach. You know, they preach the good news that God has, that God is coming. Jesus is coming for his church. Jesus is coming. We, we preach it. As I'm, as I'm saying what I'm saying, it's going on the internet and it's going all over the world. And it's saying, we're saying Jesus is coming. So guys, we got to get the people prepared that Jesus is coming. So we have to have patience. So why do we consider, why do we consider those who persecute under suffering to be blessed. What are some of the blessings that follow such perseverance? You know, if you're persecuted, you're blessed. Why do you say that, Eric? Because, you know, the blessings that follow the, you know, the persecution, the crown of life, everlasting, everlasting life with Jesus. And so, you know, we may be, may be like here here in the United States, we may be uh, made fun of. Well, why are you preaching that? God ain't doing nothing. 
I've been made fun of before because when I would, uh, right after going through my divorce, people would come, uh, had a, a close uh, family member of mine saying, well, why are you up there? You have no business being up there. You just going through a divorce. God's not going to bless you because you're going through a divorce. And, you know, and that kind of got me down. And I was like, well, you know, that's another, that's a, a way of, pers- you know, being persecuted. You know, it's, somebody's telling you that you can't do this because you went through that or you went through this or you were a drug addict. Man, God can use you no matter what. And he can, he can, he can bring you out of the lowest of lows and bring you to the highest of highs. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So James chapter 1, verse 12. Let's go back to James chapter 1, verse 12. It says this, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life with the Lord and has promised to those who love him. Man, that gets me excited just reading that. Lord, thank you, Jesus. We're going to be receiving the crown of life. All the trials, all the things that we've been going through, you know, I look at my brother Stephen. He'd be going, he went through a lot, you know, growing up. You know, God healed him from hepatitis C and source of liver. Man, brother, God, you got a crown up there, man, waiting for you, brother. We all have crowns of life. And God, God, man, I, I'm excited, okay? I'm excited. That's it. <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, 5, verse 10 through 12 said, Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward in heaven is great. In the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Man, they they persecuted people way back then. And they're still persecuting people. Look, we got to remember the people that are on this side of the world. One in the Middle East, they're being persecuted. They're getting beheaded. We are, we're, we're facing minor little things here. May get made fun of for being a Christian. While over there, they're getting their heads chopped off. All this thing. So we're blessed, guys. But pretty soon, it's, it's probably going to be coming over here. So we have to be, are you ready? Are we ready? If the persecution that they're having over here comes over here, are we ready? We have to be ready. Patience is not a quality that we naturally possess. And how can we require, uh, acquire it? We have to ask for it. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. In James chapter 5, verse 12. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. But your yes is to be yes and your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Another sign of impatience is swearing. And what is swearing? Using the Lord's like. Using God's name in vain. You know, you know, why is it offensive to God? In Exodus chapter 20, verse 7, it says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. You know, it, it's funny. You, you see TV shows now that are coming on, on TV. They're saying... God's name in vain. How come they can't say all these other gods, Allah, is in, in, in vain or Buddha in vain? I don't get that. That, that man, that infuriates me because they can use the Lord's name in vain, but they can't use their, their, their so-called God name in vain. You know, it's just, it, it gets me upset, you know, just to, see, just to hear that. You know, you see here, sometimes you hear little kids saying that because the way they hear it at home, their mother, their father, or, you know, their aunts or uncles saying that. So we should never, ever, under any circumstances, use the Lord's name in vain. In James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. 
is anyone cheerful, he is to sing praises. You know, we're talking about prayer here right now. So is anyone among you suffering? In James' time, they, they used oil. You know, it's, it was for the soothing medicine, you know, to help heal wounds. But us as Christians, this oil right here symbolizes the Holy Spirit. And, you know, James instructs us, you know, to, to if, if anyone's sick, let the elders of the church. Who are the elders of the church? Pastors. Those in authority, the leaders that are to pray over the sick. James instructs us instead of swearing and grumbling, what do we ought to do? If we're in trouble, what are, what are you going to do if you're in trouble? You're going to run? You're going to cry? No, you got to pray. We have to pray when we're in trouble. We have to pray, God, help me. Some of the greatest prayers, like Pastor Michael says, is help me, Lord. Help me, God. I need your help. You know, when I was going through the darkest time in my life, you know, I asked God. I, I, I couldn't turn to nobody else. I had to ask, ask God, help me, God. I need your help. And so I prayed. If we are happy, sing praises. I used to sing that song when I was little. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's a, man, I remember that song when I was a kid. I love that song. And then we sing praises and we're happy. You know, we're happy we sing all, we sing songs. We sing songs in Spanish, sing songs in English. If you know any other language, sing songs in that language too. It's awesome because God is a God of many languages. And they said that they said that the heavenly language, when you get up in heaven, a lot of a lot of people say it's gonna be Spanish. But I was like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when we get up there. So let's just let's sing praise. We're happy. We're always happy in here. We love we love to sing to Jesus in here. It, it's, it's an awesome time when we get together. If we are sick, he must call on the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. If you're sick, you need prayer, come up here. Come for prayer. Have the elders of the church, the, lead, the leaders of the, of the church pray over you and anoint you in the name of the Lord. The two factors that a person becomes healed, praying in faith. You got to pray in faith. If you don't have faith, what's the use of praying? You have to have faith. And if he committed a sin, ask for forgiveness and he will be forgiven in Jesus' name. God, I forgive him. I mean, I have sinned, Father. Please forgive me. You have to come with a humble heart. Ask God, God, I sinned against you. You know what I've done. I'm admitting my sin, but repent so you won't do the sins again. So why is it important to pray for each other's healing? Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 to 20 says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. It's important to pray for each other. You know, that's why when we have prayer time, we have prayer partners up here to, to pray. You know, sometimes I would come up and, you know, come up to my brother, you know, help, you know, I need your, I need your prayer. Because there is, is power in prayer. That's why we, we, in this church, we believe in prayer. That's why we have prayer service before Wednesday night service. If you can come, please come. There is power in prayer, and, and God is going to be moving in your life. So come and pray in the name of Jesus. In James chapter 5, verse 19 to 20, says this. Speaking about love. Love, love. My brethren, if anyone among you strays from the truth and one turns his back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways saves his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sin. Hearing each other's confession and praying for one another is a part of being in the family of God in the last days before Christ's return. We are the family of God. I love my family. You know, I... I 
I have family, family, like blood family here, you know, cousins and everything. But you're my family, and I love you. Amen. You know, it, it's, it's, it's awesome to get together on Wednesdays and Sunday mornings and, and Sunday nights and just to get to, to fellowship with one another. We have to have fellowship, you know, whether it be here at church or outside of church. You know, we have to have that, that fellowship. You know, when, we're get, when we get together, you know, confess to each other, pray with each other. If anyone's going through something, let, let each other pray for one another. You know, that's what I was taught when I was younger. You know, I, I, I grew up in the Assembly of the God Church, and they always told us, you know, if you need prayer, you know, let us pray for you. You know, prayer is powerful. Yet, if a brother or sister's patience should fail and tempt him, or heard from the truth, we have a more effective role also. And how is that? Well, we show them. We show them, look, this is what you're, this is the, uh, what you're going through. This is how, you know, we show them in the word. If they're dealing with a temptation or impatience, show them in the word. Ask God, God, give me wisdom that I can show my brother, my sister, the way that it is instructed in the word so they can be on the right track to go forward. Who in the church or fellowship has the responsibility to do something if a brother is seen to be wandering from the truth? We are. We are to, you know, we have that responsibility to, to show them. You know, if, if you're going through something, you know, we can show you in the word. God's telling, you know, God's saying this, God's saying that, pray over that person. There is, there is power in, in the word, there's power in, the prayer, in prayer, and there's a lot of wisdom in this book that will show you to go the right direction. Only God can bring a sinner back and save him. John 6, verse 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up. On the last day, only God can save him. But we can show him the right path to go to. So what does James mean by saying that one of us should bring the wanderer back and turn him from the error of his ways? Show him. Show him in the word. Pray with him. Counsel with him. That's what we need to do. The elders, the pastors, the teachers, we need to sit down. If you're going through something, if you're, if you're on the, the wrong path going to, on your way to hell or going downwards, let's meet with you, talk with you, pray with you, and show you in this word. Because there's a lot of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in this word. So, in wrapping up tonight in James chapter 5, we have to have patience, guys. Patience is the key to everything. Patience. We have to have patience that the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming very soon for his church. And are you ready? You know, it, it's such a blessing to be able to bring the word and to be in James. I, I love the book of James because there's so much, so much uh, information in James. Only five short chapters in James. And we talked about testing your faith. And watching your mouth. That's a big one. Watching your mouth. And having patience during prayer. And in a few minutes, we're going to have a time of prayer. And I just want you to close your eyes right now. As we go to a time of prayer. You know, God wants us. God wants us to have patience in time of prayer. Prayer is so powerful. Whenever we pray for things, ask God, let your will be done, not mine. So as we go to prayer tonight, just ask God to give you patience if you don't have patience. Heavenly Father, Father, 